One of the great new tools available to filmmakers is the new Google Earth Studio. In this video, we'll walk through a quick way to turn a daylight scene into night using Adobe After Effects. The new Earth Studio provides cinematic control to create great looking videos of places from around the world and allows for time of day control to simulate sun position and evening moonlit scenes. For evening videos, however, streets and building lighting is not an option and the scenes tend to look nice, but flat and unrealistic. Using this simple technique, you can add modern lighting to evening videos to bring your nighttime renders to life, all within a few minutes in Adobe After Effects. This technique can be applied to videos that contain virtually any dusk to dawn scene, but is limited to the inherent quality of the source video created from the Earth Studio platform. For the most part, concentrated city scenes work best. Additionally, by adding track points in Earth Studio, you can enhance your videos with simulated lighting, colors, or animation. Try to build a scene where the details are defined, but doesn't exaggerate the model resolution of the buildings. Distant buildings can be used with this technique, but may produce blurred or moiré effect in the conversion process, as is visible in this view of New York City. So let's get started. Produce your scene in Google Earth Studio, designing for optimal conditions by targeting the around 45 degree rule recommended by Google. In this shot, a famous Manhattan flyover used in many movies, the angle of the camera is kept at a fairly consistent angle as it flies over the Brooklyn Bridge and then back over the buildings. Once you're happy with your scene, render the video with your settings and extract the zip file to your computer. Jumping over to After Effects, create a new composition using your target configuration. Ensure the background color is set to black. In the Project tab, right mouse click and select Import, then from File. Select the first file in the video folder and import the sequence of images as a video. This video is a daytime shot of Manhattan. This technique uses colors that are available in the daytime video to generate a simulated nighttime scene. In essence, we'll be using the shadows and the darkness of the building windows from the daytime scene as our source light for our evening scene. The first step is to invert the colors of the video using the invert effect. Next we will add the linear color key effect to remove the shades we don't want to appear in the project. To start, we will select the water of the Hudson River which will effectively remove elements that originally had a medium gray hue. Then by adjusting the matching tolerance, we'll adjust the value to about 14%. Each scene will be slightly different, but as you can see, these two quick effects have produced an evening scene from a daytime video. Now we'll remove the sky color by duplicating the linear color key, which appears orange when inverted. Again, adjusting the matching tolerance. Now we will further refine the city lights and add colors back to the scene. The process will include this base layer of light, a highlight layer, then adding the colors of red, blue, and green back over top of the video. To create the highlight layer, we're going to duplicate the base layer and then make adjustments to that layer. We'll click the solo box to isolate the highlight layer so that we can better view the adjustments we make. By adjusting the matching tolerances, we can create a layer that will provide some different light densities for a more realistic appearance. I'll fast forward through the adjustments as it took a minute to get the look just right. We will change the blend method to add for this layer, but I will also add a slight glow to the lights to brighten up the highlighted areas. I'm using the VR glow effect here as it provides a nice glowing effect with a variety of adjustments. Additionally, I will also add a blue tinge to the glow. Now 
Now just a quick review of the lighting before we add some colors back into the video. We're going to start with the color red. We'll use the Verizon logo at the top of this building to isolate the colors to add. We'll create a duplicate layer by pressing Ctrl D to get started. Then we'll remove the effects that have been applied so that we can start from scratch. We'll zoom in on the Verizon logo and add a linear color key again. For this layer, we are not going to use the invert effect to isolate the colors, but we are removing colors from the original video. We will then invert the keys so that we are left with just the color we want, in this case red. We're using the invert alpha effect here, just underneath the color key. So we'll just scrub through the video here just to see where the red appears uh, in the various frames. And we'll make a few adjustments to see if we can get a little bit more of that red showing. Looks like we're going to need to add some more red here, so we'll make a duplicate of our linear color key. We'll get an additional red sample and combine it with the first key. You can drag your sample circle around the color area to see what shades work best to capture the most of the image that we need. And again, we can fine tune with the matching tolerances. So that's looking pretty good there. We'll just scrub through the video here to see how the red layer is now combining with the other frames. So now we'll just brighten things up again with the uh, VR glow effect. We'll just drag that onto the layer there. And we're going to add a red tint to that. So I'm just going to speed through here while we make uh, some fine tuning adjustments. Because the point of view changes in this particular scene, uh, the colors will differ from uh, the beginning to the end. So it's just a matter of being able to balance between the, uh, the various shots between the scene. It's good to switch back to the original color space of the video so you can see where any of the red highlights will appear in the image. And there we go, that's looking much better. And so now we'll add some of our blue highlights, so we'll again duplicate our red layer and remove the effect so we can again start from scratch. The blue layer will provide some depth to buildings that don't contain light sources from the underlying layer and provide a subtle base to some facades. Starting again with the linear color key and the invert alpha effect, we will keep the default blue and just adjust the matching tolerance until we achieve the desired result. And again, scrubbing the scene to see how the blue appears throughout. At this point, we will change the blending mode to add, as well as providing a small adjustment to the opacity of the blue layer. As you can see in the top middle of this frame, the shadow of the trees inverts to light, and in some cases, the entire tree will be lit. To combat this, we will add a green layer that will cover portions of the tree with dark green. To create our green layer, we're going to again duplicate and then remove all of the existing effects. We're going to add back in the linear color key. And then we're going to start selecting the various shades of green that the tree contains. You will get some spillage into the buildings. This will be subtle when rendered. To make things a little bit easier to adjust, as well as provide a color layer, we're going to add the fill effect and change the color to bright green for this adjustment. This will allow us to fine tune the green layer.
Once we've found a good balance, we'll set the fill now to a darker green. We'll also set the blend mode on the green layer to normal. That's pretty much it for this one. We'll do a quick scrub and render it out. If you encounter flickering on certain layers, this is usually due to the sensitivity of the matching tolerance and can be reduced or eliminated with the key cleaner effect. Feel free to leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe.